Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a CloudWatch dashboard. I'm going to show you how to create a couple widgets and just some things to know about using the CloudWatch dashboard tool. Now do keep in mind that if you're part of the free tier, you can create a CloudWatch dashboard with up to 50 metrics for free. However, if your account is past that one year mark and is no longer part of the free tier, you're going to have to pay $3 for every dashboard per month. So just keep that in mind if you're following along. All right, with that out of the way, let's head into the CloudWatch section of the AWS console where we can create our dashboard. So I'm just going to click on CloudWatch here, or you can optionally type it up out here. I'll just type in CloudWatch so we can get into to that particular section of the console. And then once you are on this homepage here, you're gonna to wanna to click on dashboards over here on the left-hand side. And you can say I already have one dashboard here just called test, but what you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and click on the orange button here to create a new dashboard from scratch. And then here you just need to give your dashboard a name. So I'm just gonna call this demo dashboard. All right, now you can go ahead and click on create dashboard. And so the first thing that we see is automatically, it's just asking us to add our first widget. But I'm gonna come back to this in a section, actually. I just wanna show you kind of the home screen of the dashboard. We can always return to this page, the add widget page, a little bit later on. So we're gonna do that now. So I'm just gonna close that out. And this is the home section of the AWS CloudWatch dashboard. So some things to know before we move on to creating our first widgets. Uh, you can change between different dashboards over here on the top left side here. Some things in the top right, so here is the period that we're looking at or the time range. So if you click on these different values here, you're going to see data across one day, three days, uh, 12 hours, three hours, one hour, so on and so forth. This is relative time as to the current time. So three hours from now, one hour from now, so on and so forth. However, if you're looking for a particular time, you can use the custom section here. And remember to change your time zone. By default, it should default to UTC, but you can optionally set it on local time zone to be, uh, if that's more helpful for you. So this is the relative page. If you wanna change it to a particular time at a particular day, click on absolute. And then now we can say what particular day we want metrics for. So if you want like, for example, between the 14th and 15th, between midnight and the end of the day on the 15th, you would do that and click on apply here. And now your data is showing to that particular range if we had any widgets in the screen here. So I'm just gonna disable this. Uh, we're gonna go clear and now we're, actually did that work? No, we want it to be relative actually. So let's just set this back to three days from now. You can see everything returned to normal there. All right, so there are some other options here under actions and also here, but I wanna to get to that later after we've created our first widget. So the widgets are really the, the contents of the dashboard. So every chart, every graph, every table, anything that you want to add onto your dashboard is considered to be a CloudWatch widget. So in order to add one, you're gonna to wanna to click on add widget in the top right here. Optionally, you can click on this one one, but this button and stuff is going to disappear once we add our first widget to our dashboard. So you want to get in the habit of adding it in over here uh, by using this button. All right, so now it's asking us which type of widget that we want to create. As you can see here, there's many different widgets that we have options to create. We're going to be creating a, a couple in this tutorial. So let's just briefly talk about each of these widgets. So there's the Explorer widget that lets you put other widgets within widgets. Kind of useful, but not really. There's line graphs, which are very useful. You're going to be using that a lot. Stacked areas, which are great for percentages. Numbers for showing like key kinds of business metrics in one shot. So it'll literally be a number, literally be a number on your screen. There's gauges. This is great for like showing health or maybe how much TPS you're doing. There's bar graphs. Uh, I guess you can find a reason to use this. Pie graphs. You probably shouldn't be using pie graphs in general because they don't show data very well visually. Um, there's also custom widgets where you can create your own using Lambda and more. Haven't tried this. It's a new feature, but you can look into it. Uh, there's text widgets. These are really helpful for just kind of giving structure to your dashboard. So adding titles, adding kind of subheadings and stuff like that. You can use marked down language here to add links to other dashboards, um, formats and, you know, head, heading, subheading kind of uh, organization, stuff like that. You can embed logs into your dashboard. And this one here, this is actually one of my favorites, alarm status. That is basically a badge that shows you whether or not an alarm is currently activated or not. So these are some of the widgets that you're going to be working with. So we're going to get some experience with this. So let's start out by creating a line widget. And the first thing we wanna do, it's asking us uh, from which data source would you like to create the widget? We're gonna say from metrics. You, you can also do this based on logs, but metrics is by far the most intuitive. 
And then from this point, this is just your normal kind of metric page on CloudWatch. And so I'm not gonna talk about this too much in detail because that's probably worth it for another video, but let me just kind of teach you the basics as we go here. Um, so we're just gonna search for the metrics. I'm gonna be doing uh, metrics based on my Lambda function and it looks like this page doesn't, oh, there we go. Uh, where is Lambda here? There it is. And we wanna say, um, let's just do by function name. And I have one called uh, serverless web crawler. Yeah, the crawler. So let's add a type of data on here. So say, for example, we want to see the number of invocations or the number of requests to this Lambda function. I can very easily add that here. And also on this same graph, I want to see the errors. So we want to see two pieces of information here. Ignore what we see here. So uh, for now, because we're going to be coming back to this in a second, I'm going to click on create widget now. So before you take a look at this data too closely and say like this data doesn't make sense, let me just kind of fix that really quick. So first of all, we want to go back into the, the data for this particular widget. We can modify the widget after we've created it by clicking on these three dotted lines here and then clicking on edit. You can also duplicate, delete, enlarge, so on and so forth. We'll come back to that later. So we're gonna click on edit. First of all, I just wanna change the errors to red because usually that's a better indication that something is a problem. And then I want to change the statistic for these uh, metrics. So average number of invocations doesn't really make sense for me. I want to look at the total number. So you can do this in two ways. You can say, I wanna change this to sum. And then you can see now we've changed, the graph changed uh, as you would imagine. And then when you can do this for the bottom one too for errors, but there's a much faster way. All you have to do is do uh, click on this drop down here under statistic, and then you can just do it once and it changes everything for you all at once. And similarly, if you wanna look at this at a different period, maybe you don't like five minutes, you can change it from five minutes to 15 minutes or five minutes to one hour, whatever you want uh, your metric granularity to be at. Uh, I like to do between five minutes and one minutes for dashboard. So let's just leave it at five for this particular case. All right, so we're gonna click on update widget now. And there we go, our widget has just updated. And so now if we change our time frame up here, right now we're looking at three days. And so you're, you're kind of zoomed out at a three days level. So it's really hard to see like what are the trends in this data? You can see a couple days ago here, and if I highlight highlight over it, you can see that the date, so 10-21, October 21st at 17.40. Uh, you can see on this day, which is October 23rd at 18.15. So this is a function that I've just been invoking for the past couple of days. So that's why the data is a little bit wonky. But let's zoom in a little bit more. Let's look at it at the 12 hour uh, time frame. You can see you can start to derive more meaning from this table now. You can also change this to three hours. So we're getting more and more zoomed in here. And of course, you can also change it to one hour to see even more zoomed in. Now, when you have multiple widgets on this page, say we had a second one and you change any of these settings up here, all of the underlying widgets on the dashboard are also going to change. So very, very helpful for just kind of changing around the different timeframes that you're looking at to get a broader sense of what's happening with your system. All right, cool. So we created our first widget now. This was the line widget. Let's create a different widget now. So we're gonna go again uh, to the top right here where it says add widget. Uh, let's try creating a stacked area widget. And again, we're gonna do this based on metrics. And I'm gonna do this slightly differently this time. I'm just gonna type in Lambda to filter down our results. And then uh, let's say across all functions and let's do something like duration here. And let's actually go to graphed metrics. And so we can see now we're looking at the average duration at a period of five minutes. And if we create that, you can see the stacked area here. So this doesn't really make sense with one um, metric here. If you had multiple metrics on this that dashboard, it would definitely make a lot more sense. And especially if you're using things like percentages, that's a much better use of the stack area graph. And like I was saying before, if we change kind of the time ranges again, you can see how it's updating across all the different graphs. So that is working as we would expect here. All right, so let's try another widget out. We're gonna go to add widget in the top hand side here again. And this time let's add a number widget. And a number widget before I actually select the metric is great for just showing kind of a fixed number at a particular moment in time. So maybe average transactions per second for your system or number of requests per hour, whatever kind of key metric is important for you and for your system, you may want to put in the number widget. So again, let's do this uh, by Lambda. 
and across all functions this time. And we just want to say uh, maybe the errors. That, that's a key business metric for us. That's something we want to take a look at. You can see by default, like 0 0.04 errors. What does that mean? Uh, it's, it's the wrong number because we haven't changed this under the graph section, graph metric section um, from average to something more meaningful, like sum, for example. So you can see uh, over the past 12 hours, we've had nine errors here. So this is much better. We're going to say create widget now in the bottom right. And you can see we now have this number widget. Now this looks a little bit wonky because we have a big size here. And this is probably a good time to talk about resizing. So you can resize your widgets. So you can kind of shrink here, provided you um, you touch the bottom handle here, the bottom right, that is going to, show, to allow you to resize it. And you can resize anything from really, really large and you can see it reflows pretty well. And then you can like drag things around if you want. Um, and stack things in a certain way that works well for your use case, you can really get creative here. But I'm just gonna keep this relatively simple for now uh, and just organize this nice and neatly. All right, so now we have a number widget here and two other widgets, a stacked area and a line graph. Um, I want to now add a text widget, which is gonna allow us to give this dashboard a kind of structure. So let's go to add widget now, and we're gonna say text. So text is at the bottom here. And you get this prompt. And if you want to read about all the things that you can do with Markdown here, like you can add buttons, you can add primary buttons, you can add tables, you can add code links. If you want to put run books, like text blobs for what to do in case this alarm is going off, stuff like that, you can do that here. But I'm just going to erase all this stuff. Um, I usually use these for, you know, adding some context over the alarms of what we're looking at here. But also very useful is for giving your dashboard overall structure. So let's just say, I don't know, maybe there's like um, a section for core health metrics here that we're going to add at the top, right? And so this looks kind of silly when you add it, right? But um, the way that it's useful is if you resize it to so these long horizontal um, frames here and then you drag it up, you can start creating structure for your dashboard. So now, you know, you can duplicate this if you want and we can add a second section. Let me just um, deselect that. And you have to kind of click at the top here in order to get it uh, to drag. And then I'm going to create a second section here. We're going to edit this. Let's just say... I don't know, we want this to be the alarm section, for example, alarms. And we will be creating an alarm widget in a second, so that makes sense. So you can see how this is starting to take some form. All right, so the last widget that I want to show you is one that is particularly useful, and that is, of course, the alarm widget. So let's go to the top right here and click on Add Widget. We're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and click on Alarm Status. And this is going to bring us a prompt to select the alarm that we want to configure here. And so I have an alarm that I created that's a custom alarm, not these kind of auto scaling alarms that you're seeing in front of you here. This one is for a completely different project, but it's something that we can use. So we're going to click on that toggle box there and let's click on create widget. And now it's just going to ask us some basic questions. You can keep the name of the widget to be whatever the name of your alarm is, or you can give it a custom name if you want. I'm going to leave this all as default for now. We're going to say add to dashboard. And this is what you get. You basically get a single widget here that tells you a very binary fact, whether or not that this alarm is currently in alarm state or not, or in an insufficient data state. So this is very, very powerful just at a quick glance. Say like the first time you come to this dashboard, you want to immediately know, is anything wrong? If you have a bunch of alarms here and you create these different badges for them and you have like, you know, 15 or 20 just lined up right beside each other here, that's very, very powerful. And it'll tell the reader very quickly, is there something wrong with this system? And then say one of these is red because it went into alarm state. You can be like, oh, something is wrong here. I should look at what this alarm means figure out which metric you need to look at based on this alarm and then come investigate it a little more thoroughly. So that's like a typical workflow that you can run through when using these types of dashboards. All right, so a couple other things that I wanted to talk about in this dashboard and kind of some quality of life improvements that I would make. Now, it's really great to have on a dashboard kind of like um, horizontal lines to indicate alarm thresholds or things like SLA or service level agreement for your APIs. So for example, say this duration metric here, say we have a, a business product, we're running a service where we, where we say to our customers, 
every API request to our API is going to return within two seconds. You can see here, we're pretty close to that, that threshold. We're at 1.94 seconds here. So I may want to have a horizontal line coming across here just to remind us of what our SLA is in this case. Now we can very easily add that to this dashboard by clicking on the three dotted lines here. We're going to go to edit. And then we're going to go to options here. And then we're going to scroll all the way down here, all the way on this page to where it says add horizontal annotation. We're going to click on this. We're going to rename this, the label from untitled to whatever you want, SLA in our case. And then the value, ours is going to be 2000 because this is in milliseconds. So we're going to click on the checkbox here. And then we're going to click on update widget. And there you go. Now we have, I don't know why it says untitled there. I thought I, I changed that. Let's just do that again really quick. Uh, options. And maybe that didn't say, I don't think I, I typed enter or pressed enter. So there you go. You got to press enter and then click on update widget. And there you go. So we have the SLA there and we get to see all that information in front of us. Now, a couple other things for this dashboard that I wanted to point out. Uh, the first is that if you go to the top right here and you click on this little down uh, downward arrow, you can set auto refresh on this dashboard. So you can make it so that every one minute or every 10 seconds, the data on this dashboard will automatically refresh. This is great if you kind of have a screen where you want to keep this stuff on or maybe like a second monitor or something so that you can constantly have the most fresh data consistently coming in. So it keeps it really up to date for you. Another thing that I wanted to point out is that there's a bunch of options here under actions. Um, you can save that. Well, first of all, you want to click save dashboard pretty periodically, by the way, because you know you don't want to lose your progress here. Um, and then under actions, you can save this dashboard as another name if you want to copy this to a new one. You can rename the dashboard. You can share the dashboard. And this is really cool because um, you can share this. Well, let's just try it. So if we click on share dashboard, you can share your dashboard and require a username and password that you can set up if you click this button. You can make it totally publicly if you click this button. And you can share it by using single sign-on or SSO. So a lot of different options for you to share your dashboard uh, with other users. But that's a different topic. Let's go back here. All right, so like I was saying, there's a lot of other things that you can do. Now, this is a very neat feature, Replay Dashboard. They must have just added this pretty recently because I haven't seen it since, uh, I guess, a couple weeks ago or so. But if you click on this button now, you can replay the timeline of your data on your graph. So what we can do is we can change what time we want to start looking at. And then I can just click on play here. Actually, it looks like it defaulted to that particular time. Let's just see when the data gets to over here. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. So it's going like pretty slow, like every increments an hour here. And you can see now it's replaying our data over time as if we were watching it live. And of course, like you can fast forward things and rewind that kind of stuff. Super cool feature that they just added pretty recently. Not too bad. So to get out of that, you want to go to the top right here where it says exit replay. Uh, going back here to some other options. Now view slash edit source. This is um, very powerful because it allows you to basically create a dashboard manually here in the, the console and then export the source so that you can manage it using something like CloudFormation or CDK. So you can click on this and this is the raw uh, JSON to create this dashboard again from scratch. So if you created a new dashboard and then went in here and just pasted in this data, you would get exactly what we have in front of us. So you can actually take this and throw it into a file. And when you create your infrastructure as code using CDK or CloudFormation, you can just refer to that file and then the dashboard will be created using this source code here. So pretty handy for uh, kind of replication sake. Let's go back here to see some more options. So there's a bunch of settings you can take a look at. Set default time range. This is very, very important. Uh, I like to set this at about three days because that's usually the time horizon that I think makes the most sense. But this will make it so that anytime you load up this dashboard, the time range up here will be whatever you say. The way this works is that if you set this, it's going to use whatever you have currently selected. Um, these other ones I don't think are very useful, so I'm just going to skip on that. Uh, live data override, not useful. Period override. Um, this is kind of important. Let me let me kind of de demonstrate what this means. So if we go back to like three hours here, and I don't know why my data isn't showing up. Um, this is weird. 
I'm just going to try and reload my dashboard here. Yeah, sometimes I guess I was messing with the settings here and I may have uh, changed something unknowingly. But anyways, um, by default here, the time range, if you look at the, the pop up here that has the date and the duration on it, you can see 2022, 1023, 1940. And if I hover to the left now, you'll see this will change to 1935 and then 1930 and 25. So it's going by five minute increments here, five minute chunks. And if I go to the hour, this will be even more obvious. So this one is 1955, this one is 20. Now, say we wanna look at this at a much more granular level, say at one minute increments. So that's where this uh, setting comes into play. You can come over here to period override and change this to one minute. And so now you can see much more detail. And if we zoom out a little bit, you'll see even more. This is great for identifying patterns that occur in very short intervals. So that's a very important um, feature to keep in mind. Some other settings that you may want to keep an eye on here. So if you want to link charts, don't really use this very much, if at all. And if you want to change it between light and dark mode, which I believe was a relatively new feature. Um, so that is it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed, please check out my other ones on CloudWatch on the left and right. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.